In this video, I will describe what PA46 pilots need to know about the nose gear. All PA46 models have the same nose gear design, so this video will be useful for your model. As you may know, PA46 aircraft have been involved in a number of loss of control incidents on landing. In some cases, the problem was attributed to damage to the nose gear from towing, or perhaps to lack of proper maintenance of the nose gear mechanism. These problems were not discovered on the pre-flight by the pilot. Now, if we understand the mechanism, we can detect nose gear problems before we fly. To get an idea of the mechanism we're about to discuss, let's go to the shop where the landing gear is undergoing a test. Yeah, you're far enough back, so I'm gonna hit you with the phone. Okay, you're clear, Zach? I'd love to do the flaps. Okay, run them up. Okay, down. Did you see how the nose wheel turns 90 degrees? Let's look at it more slowly. The 90 degree turn is to achieve compact stowing and it requires that the nose gear disconnects from the steering mechanism. When the nose gear comes down, the steering mechanism must re-engage. If it does not re-engage properly, the pilot will have trouble when the nose wheel touches the pavement. Now let's take a closer look. The heart of the system is the trunnion. In this figure, I show the trunnion from the side. Note that the strut is free to move up and down. If not for the torque link, the strut could fall out of the trunnion. The trunnion itself does not turn when the pilot steers, rather the parts shown in yellow turn. It is the torque link that transmits the turning force to the strut and wheel. If the torque link were to come apart, you'd not be able to steer, and of course you could lose the nose wheel. There are three bolts that hold the torque link together. The yellow arrow points to these bolts. Be sure on your pre-flight that all three nuts are in place. The nuts should each have a cotter pin so that the nut cannot come off the bolt in flight. Make sure that these cotter pins are in place. While you are checking the torque link bolts, take a look at the right side of the bottom of the trunnion. If the nose wheel has been turned too far to the right, you'll see damage to the trunnion. If you see chip paint or bent metal in the area shown by the red dotted line, you'll want to inspect the nose gear carefully and I'll explain what to look for later in this video. Coming back to the trunnion, let's look at the steering. The steering axis is vertical, and it's important that the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the ground. The angle that the nose gear makes to the fuselage is called the rake angle, and the specifications are very tight. For example, for the meridian, the angle is 90 degrees plus 0.5 degrees minus zero degrees. In other words, no negative rake. Your mechanic can set this angle precisely. Let's take a look at how you can make a quick check of the rake angle during a pre-flight. The nose wheel needs to be perpendicular to the ground. And we, if we have any doubts about that, we can simply put a level on it, as I'll show you, to determine if we're perpendicular to the ground. You can see that this wheel is level. Now, it's going to depend on to a certain extent, your strut inflation. So be sure your strut inflations are normal when you do that. Let's take a look underneath the engine at the top of the trunnion. In this view, we are behind the trunnion looking upward toward the prop. The yellow line shows the axis that the trunnion rotates around when the gear retracts. The trunnion is fixed to the engine mount by two bushings shown by the yellow arrows that allow the trunnion to rotate. The hydraulic actuator pulls the trunnion up when we retract the gear and pushes it down for extension. We can also see the emergency downspring that pushes the trunnion into place when the hydraulic system has failed. The steering horn, shown in blue in this drawing, has two rollers that contact the steering arm, shown in green. Here's a top view looking down at the trunnion and steering horn. We apply steering input by pushing on the pedals, which in turn pushes the steering arm, which in turn pushes the rollers on the steering horn. As described earlier, 
The steering horn is connected to the nose wheel via a sleeve inside the trunnion and then through the torque links. When the gear retracts, the rollers and the steering arm separate. When the gear is extended, the rollers and the steering arm must be in close proximity or the steering will be sloppy. Let's take a close look at an actual steering horn. In this view, we're looking at the top of the trunnion. The two rollers, which incidentally have different diameters, sit at the top of the steering horn. We can see the green steering arm that pushes on the rollers. When you push on the left pedal, the steering arm pushes on the right roller, which in turn turns the nose wheel to the left. By the way, if you suspect you might have towing damage, check the three steering horn mounting screws. In one incident, towing oversteered the nose wheel and the screws were sheared, meaning that the steering horn was just barely connected to the trunnion and it came apart on landing. Let's look even closer. The gap between the rollers and the steering arm is critical. The clearance is actually the sum of the gaps at the left and right rollers. It is about equal to the width of a business card. We do not want too much gap because it will be difficult to control the nose wheel. Also, we must have some gap because the rotation of the steering horn and the steering arm are not on a common axis. Since they don't share a common axis, at some angle the steering will jam. But if the gaps are within spec, the nose wheel can turn freely left or right 30 degrees. This also explains why the pedals cannot turn the nose wheel beyond about 30 degrees. The eye bolt is used to position the steering arm. The eye bolt can be damaged by oversteering from a tow bar, so make sure that the bolt is in place and not bent. Some final thoughts. Make sure your tires are inflated properly. Check the Piper service letter on tire inflation. At the time of the creation of this video, it is service letter 1285C. Also, make sure that the struts are serviced. Leaking hydraulic fluid can lead to trouble. It may be tempting to replace missing fluid with nitrogen to get the proper strut extension, but the strut will not provide the proper shock absorption. Try to develop a feel for the steering, including the amount of play in the pedals. If you sense a change in the feel, stop and check it out. Last, I would like to mention that in a separate video, I describe how to do a simple pre-flight check of the gap between the rollers and the steering arm based on wiggling the rudder. Please check it out.